Hey everybody on YouTube. So last week there was a little Steam sale going on. I picked up a few games and one of those games was a little indie title named Banish. I've been looking at this title for a while and it's uh, made by Shining Rock Studio and this is my full review. Banished is an independently published city building simulation game. It was released in February 2014 for Windows PC with Mac OS X and Linux support planned for a future release. The game's focus is on building a city for a group of outcast settlers by surviving harsh weather conditions, optimizing resource management, and material production. The presentation in Banished is good, but nothing incredible. The game has simple graphics and animations that are well made and consistent. I'd say the graphics look best during winter when the snow is out. It's a nice effect, but sadly the rest of the game just kind of looks normal. There are some rainstorms, and that's about it. It's not bad by any means, it just doesn't stand out. Now this is a small indie title, and gameplay is what's important, but I do think some more weather variety would have gone a long way to break up the repetitive look of the game. The music has a medieval kind of tone to it, and that makes me think of other games in that kind of era. And it's not bad, but since the game is pretty slow progression, you'll end up hearing the entire soundtrack within about an hour. Though the music is low key enough for the repetition to be less bothersome than other indie games like Game Dev Studio or even FTL. The best part of the presentation of this game is the interface. The interface forgoes the stupid ornate designs that have plagued games like this for years, and it goes with a stripped down simple interface that shows you what you need to know and only takes up the screen space that it needs to. You can open, close, and pin boxes to the screen in any order you want, so you can have as much or as little info on the screen as you desire. It's refreshing to see a game that finally gets that you don't need a big fancy, unmovable interface to impress or immerse the player. Unlike most city building games, Banish uses the town's citizens as its main resource, instead of something like gold, that most of their games use in this genre. Instead of governance and land usage balance, the game's gameplay is more about making a self-sufficient city and surviving winter by careful resource planning. Citizens in Banished are all tracked from birth to death and each need food, shelter, and a job. Instead of houses sheltering dozens of people, the homes in Banished have a limited capacity, offering a more realistic look at city building. NPCs in the game are used to collect and produce all the goods that your town needs. There are traders in the game, but it's entirely based on a barter system, so there is no money to buy supplies, and you can't know what an individual merchant will have to sell each time they visit. This creates a cool dynamic I haven't seen in any other city builder. The game is more about optimization than exploiting game mechanics or finding the easiest way to make money. If you don't plan correctly, you'll have resource shortages and die-offs early in the winter months. The things needed to keep your population thriving mainly come down to food, shelter, and happiness. But of course, there are resources that you must collect that enable you to provide those things. These include building materials like wood, stone, iron, and coal, and food items like fish, deer, fruits, and vegetables. These materials are then used to create stuff like clothing, firewood, and tools. You make buildings and structures to collect and utilize each resource and assign NPCs to each of those jobs. Some include things like blacksmith, woodcutter, and tailor. Keeping your citizens happy comes down to providing things like churches, cemeteries, and breweries. And sadly, that's it. Once you know what each building in the game does, there isn't any more variety. I enjoy the lack of a technology or skill tree that most of these games have, but the lack of any sort of unlockable buildings or services, the game has little feeling of progression. The only real progression is watching your town grow, and though that is satisfying, at times the game failed to hold my attention. I know the game has mods that could possibly remedy some of this, but I feel like the base game could have used more random unique services or unlockable building upgrades. My favorite aspect of the gameplay is that instead of micromanaging your NPCs, you simply divide your labor up by how many people you want to do each job. It's done through a simple interface panel, which makes it super easy to do, making the real game about balancing your resources and growth instead of micromanaging each individual computer agent. It's such a simple idea, but it goes a long way to making the game more playable and utilizes its AI well, instead of making you keep track of the hundreds of NPCs. However, I did run into some issues with NPCs not building certain structures that were a little ways away from my city. I wish there was some sort of priority system to tell workers which building needs attention sooner. Apparently there is a tool for this, and I tried it, but it just never seemed to work for me. I could just be bad at it, but it seems like a simple list could have been an easier way to prioritize tasks instead of a weird selection tool. In a similar fashion to games like SimCity, Banish has no win condition. The game has many achievements, but no way to end the game. It's to be expected with this sort of game, however, I always enjoyed goal-oriented simulation games like Roller Coaster Tycoon that had a specific year and goal in mind, but would let you keep playing afterwards. Though Banish does have some harder difficulties that will give experienced players a challenge, extending the replayability a bit. 
The tutorials offer a great intro to the mechanics of the game, but it's up to you to figure out how to start your city and survive the early years. I had to start four different cities until I felt like I had a viable strategy for starting the game. And that's not a bad thing. Banish doesn't hold your hand when it comes to strategy. It offers you some hints and ideas, but everyone comes up with their own way to build a city. The game doesn't feature combat or external threats like other cities, and that opens the game up to be more relaxing, but also to still be challenging. The game never stressed me out, and I can't say that for most games in this genre. Banish is a great game, and it's cool to see one developer be able to make a game that challenges the mechanics we expect out of a city builder. I really like the simple interface and the way the game handles NPC management. The presentation is decent and certainly gets the job done, but it gets a little stale. Overall, it's a fun, relaxing game that I was pleasantly surprised by. I would recommend this game to anyone who wants to play a challenging city builder with some unique mechanics. Okay everybody, that was my video for this week. I hoped you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, drop me a comment in the comments section and uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. In a week or two, I'll be doing a video on The Vanishing of Ethan Carter Redux. It was a game I picked up on that Steam sale, so be looking for that one.